we're going to take a quick look at the Credible API just to help you get started. We'll run through what it is that we're aiming for, we'll explain the data model, and then we'll take a look at a few of the endpoints. So here's what we're aiming for. Whether we're using a certificate or a badge or both, we're trying to create resources that live on a unique URL and look like this example here, or just to show you a badge, this example here. Whether it's a certificate or a badge, we're always going to use the word credential on the API. That's the model that represents the data that's displayed. So the credential contains the recipient's person's name, the recipient's email, data like when the credential was issued or when the certificate or badge expires. Credentials belong to a group and groups represent courses, events, achievements, or certifications. They have things like a, an achievement name, an achievement description, a link back to your website, and we attach either certificate designs or badge designs to the group. So each group has credentials and each group has one or more assigned designs. And then final note before we look at the API documentation is just that we're going to need an API key to be able to make any requests. So you can find that when you sign up for an account, you head over to the settings page and you look on the API and integrations tab, you'll see your API key here. So taking a look at the API documentation, you can find this publicly available at this URL. And the API is relatively straightforward. It's a RESTful API where we provide access directly to the data model that we've just been looking at. So there are certain things on a credible that we can do on the API, and there are certain things that we better to do on the dashboard. Um, designs really need to be done on the dashboard because they're a visual object. It's difficult to manipulate those with the API. On the API, we're really looking at two main endpoints that we'll be interacting with. Uh, they're going to be credentials and they're going to be groups. Now, if you're creating credentials for, let's say, just a handful of different achievements um, in the order of, say, 10, and they don't change very often, I'd recommend just issuing against the credentials endpoint. If you expect to have lots of achievements, say lots of courses or events or certifications, and you expect them to change a lot, then don't create those by hand on the dashboard, create them using the API. So to get started, we're just gonna head over to the quick start here and look at this create credential endpoint. So all of our endpoints follow this format. They're all at api.credible.com, API version, and then the endpoint name. And in the documentation here, you can see the request attributes and the headers. So the headers are gonna be common for all of the requests that you're gonna see here that are post requests. And the formatting you have to be careful with. You, we just need to paste your API key here. Let's take a look at a curl example. You'll see how that header with the API key should look. So I'll just put that into place now with my example key and, and show you how that should look. So we're just gonna replace that section there. and you'll see that's gonna come out like this. All of our data wants to be in JSON format. And the first thing you want to do is use this endpoint to create a credential. The only required fields are gonna be the recipient's name, the recipient's email, and the particular group that you would like to create the credentials in. And if I head back to my dashboard here, you can see for an example group I've made. So I'm gonna do this in curl but you can find different language examples in our documentation by just selecting from this dropdown here. So to begin with, we've pasted in our example API key, and now I'm just gonna put some example data, just the required fields here. And then I'm gonna put in that group ID. And you'll see once the request is successful, we'll receive the full credit.
credential object back. Once we've got comfortable with creating an example credential with the minimal information, we can take a look at the other fields available on a credential that we might want to pass along. So the most important fields here really are going to be both the credential ID and the recipient ID. So we recommend using these fields if you're implementing against the API because you can supply unique IDs, you can supply unique identifiers for credentials and for credential recipients, which you can reference later. That just means you won't have to store any data internally and you can rely on the IDs that you send us for things like user IDs, which will just make things easier in the long run when you want to come back and edit credentials programmatically. You can also set up, send pretty much any data field you would like to display on a credential or have sent out in the email to recipients by having a JSON hash in the custom attributes field here. The other endpoint worth mentioning is we just have a very quick accessible SSO link generation endpoint um, where you can post a quick request and you'll receive a, a single sign-on code that can be given to recipients at render time. So let's say you're doing an implementation and you'd like students to be able to click a link in your application and they'll automatically be signed on to use their credentials. Then this is the endpoint that would be the easiest method of doing that. But we do support other single sign-on standards such as OAuth and SAML. If you have any questions or need any help getting set up, please email support at accredible.com.